I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses The one who opened up the oceans I need you now to do the same thing for Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Calling on the God of Mary. Whose favor rests upon the lowly I know with you all things are possible I'm calling on the God of David Who made a shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath But I got my own giants Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now Oh rock, oh rock of ages I'm standing on your faithfulness On your faithfulness Hello, we're going to have a quick word of prayer, so everyone can bow their heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this beautiful Sabbath that you've given us, God. Now that we're going to start your service, God, please be with us. Please be with the singers. Uh, please be with me who's going to speak later on today, God. And please let the entire program grow well smoothly. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Sabbath Church. Sabbath. Psalms 100 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his Lord endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The church is now called to worship. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Olivia, and I'd like to welcome you to Kendall SDA. If it is your first time here, we'd like to thank you and hope that you leave having been spiritually fed. And if you are a returning friend or member, thank you for being here. I invite you to sing with us as we sing our welcome song and go around and greet each other. Yeah. 
Happy Sabbath, church. It's a great day to praise the Lord. Amen. What a beautiful day out there. What beautiful people. God is good. I like the model they were talking about earlier. Each one can reach one. And that's an excellent model. I love that. Uh, our pastoral notes, just to remember, we still have our morning manna. The church that prays. We pray every morning at 430. We also have the phone call at 6. Uh, we have a noon Zoom every day except for Sabbaths. And then we have the Wednesday night prayer meeting, we have the Thursday night women's prayer meeting, and the Friday night Bible study, all on Zoom. Uh, Tuesday nights, I'm feeling it today, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., we have our exercise class. Uh, today, after the service, we're gonna go and give out flyers, English and Spanish, in the community. So hopefully we get that class of 16, 17 to grow to 50, and that would be great to have a lot of people from the community. Our 30 days of prayer starts March 1st, so we're going to do 30 days uh, prayer and fasting, and that's going to start on March 1st, go through March 30th, and that's going to be from 7 to 8 p.m. Every night we're going to have a service, and church leaders, we're all going to pray, and we, if you want to join us, we're all going to actually fast on Wednesdays and on Sabbath, make it a full day's fast. And on March 30th, we're going to finish off with a first fruit offering, which we're going to bring a first, we're going to have a tree, and we're going to give our first offering uh, to the church, okay? Uh, February 17th, that's next Sabbath at 4 p.m., there's going to be a deacon's ordination here that's going to be combined homestead and Kendall. Remember Brother Donovan, keep him in your prayer. He's still recovering from surgery. Today, we will be feeding the homeless at 3.30, not 4.30, 3.30, because at 4.30, we actually having our AY is kicking off their first program. So I want... Everyone to come out and support our AY team, even though it doesn't matter how old you are, because I'm not AY, I'm AO for Adventist old. So come out and support them. They're actually going to have a little skit here kind of to promote tonight's program. God bless you. I know that God loves me, but after my mom left, I feel so alone. Oh, who are you? I'm Arrow. I'm a rat squirrel. I can make you feel all warm and cuddly. Uh, I'm a little too young for that. <laughs> oh, sorry, who are you? Oh, I'm familial love. That's great. That's exactly what I need. Oh, awesome. We, we are family. My best friend. Found a new best friend. So now, I don't have a best friend. Whoa. Who are you? I'm Arrow. I'm a romantic love. I can make See you later. <laughs> Whoa. Who are you? I'm brotherly love. Best, best friend? Yes. Yeah. Man, I can't believe my girlfriend just left me. Oh, who are you? I'm self-love. Oh, I got lots of that. <laughs> oh, who are you? I'm Eros. I'm a romantic love. I can make you feel warm. Oh, I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. <laughs> Will you marry me? Yes. I'm not good at anything. I always mess up at everything. Oh, sorry. Who are you? I'm self-love. I can help you realize your self-worth. That's exactly what I need. We can go together. OK, sure.
difficult to do. I know my friends and family love me, and I'm happily married, but I just feel like something is missing. Who are you? I'm agape love. I help you realize God's unconditional sacrificial love. Wow, that's really what I need right now. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. This is our AY, part of our AY team, and we are so excited to have our first AY of the year today at 4.30. You will not want to miss it. It's going to be all about love. So we'll see you back here to this evening at 4.30. Thank you. you guys to stand with us for our praise and adoration section. for our second song.
above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonder the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. ground you took the fall and thought of me above all above all powers above all kings above all nature and all created things Above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonder the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth there's no way to measure what you're worth crucified laid behind the stone you live to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me crucified lay behind the stone you live to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground took the fall and thought of me you took the fall and thought of me you took the fall and thought of me Sabbath Church. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, First John 4. But anyone who does not love God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. We invite you guys to sing with us our prayer song. to 
bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to me King of all days, oh so highly exalted Oh, us in heaven above Humbly you came to the earth you created All for the sick became poor Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God We're all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to me Good morning, church. Um, so for this intercessory prayer, I would like us to just take a step back and just think about our lives and where they are in general. Um, just to think about, you know, where we have been, where we are, where we're going, um, the things that matter to us, maybe the things that don't matter to us. Um, there's a lot happening, and I feel like we have to take some time to really consider what all of this really is for us, what all of, all of this really means to us. Um, I know me personally, I've had a lot that I've been thinking about processing um, in the past you know, week, also in the past kind of month of the year. And then right now, my last year of med school, there's obviously a lot going on, but, um, you know, reality checks do kind of come pretty often, I feel like, and I mean, for yesterday, it was the fact that a fairly good friend of mine, um, his dad unfortunately died from a battle with liver cancer. Um, it was a back and forth where his dad had had remission, and then it came back, um, and I was texting him yesterday and I had asked him, you know, how are you feeling? And he told me, I don't know what I'm supposed to feel. Um, and that moment just helped me to really take a step back and really consider, you know, life itself. Um, I feel like there's a lot of things we can focus on in life, but I think life itself is something for us to really, um, think about. So um, with that, I invite us all as much as possible to kneel for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here this morning. Thank you for allowing us to be here in this sanctuary, to be here at this church this morning. Dear Lord, we have been blessed with the ability to be here, with the freedom to be here, and to worship you according to our beliefs, God. And that is a blessing that we should not take for granted. I pray that you will be with each of us during this service as we look to continue to be in your presence and to draw close to you and to learn about you and to be in fellowship with each other. I pray that you will allow us to remove any of the things that will hinder us from getting the full experience that you have for us today, God. I pray that in our own individual lives, God, I pray that you will help us to really be honest with ourselves about where we are and where we are going and where we think that we want to be. And I pray that we will just be willing to give our plans into your hands, God, and I pray that we will be willing to 
remove our egos and to remove all the other things that can get in the way of the plans that you have for us, God. And truthfully, I pray that we will just be more intentional and more willing to be present, God. I feel that we are we are falling away from being present, God. And although we did have a pandemic that gave us reason to have a bit of distance for a time, I pray that we will be willing to re-engage, that we will be, real, be willing to begin to close some of those distances, God, and that we will be willing to be connected to each other because what is a family without connection? So I pray that you will guide us as we try to walk together as a church family, dear Lord. As an overall people, I pray that you will just be with us and that we will be willing to follow your example and follow your lead as we um, continue to spread the gospel, God. I pray that we will be pillars of light for those around us, God. Thank you for all who have been participating in this service and all who will be participating both now and in this afternoon, God, and I pray that this Sabbath will just be a blessing for all of us. Thank you for the blessings you have given us and are giving us and will continue to give us. We thank you for all this and much more. Your name, I pray. Amen. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me morning and happy Sabbath, Kendall SD and all those joining us today. This is a time in our service where we joyfully present our tithes and offerings to the Lord, recognizing that all we have is offering. a gift from Him. At Kendall SD, in Romans 1 verse 25, it says, so, They exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the Creator, and after participating who is blessed forever. Through giving, Please Anything that relates to our life and continue but is not completely in God's hands can become a God false God. Bless you and the enjoy Greeks, the, rest the Romans, of the and other ancient peoples were Maybe you've of heard of the personal them, giving plan. Everything could become what is God. it? Well, let me start by saying that I think it is absolutely the Roman best God way to fund your local word, church, <laughs> your conference, it says, and the Seventh day Adventist the world God of mission. workers, Mammon, the God of money, and so forth. We must admit that as human beings, So why am I convinced the that the personal but giving plan is the best way to fund the church? Like Here are three reasons. Lives. One, the personal Anyone giving plan builds a strong financial foundation for our denomination. In it makes the difference between a strong church that can move forward in financial confidence or a weak organization that never seems to have enough money. You know the song about Paul building your house upon a rock? It applies to churches as well. Second, it teaches us to practice regular or systematic giving. That is not giving that is based on convenience or feelings happy. of generosity. Feelings that, as you know, come and go. Third, it gives us an organized way to respond to all the calls for financial help that we in hear God about alone, in church we are and receive happy. through the mail. It organizes One of the most giving into five false areas. Tithe, local of church greed, budget, conference advance, world budget, of money. and special gifts. That's why Jesus said, Because we plan these offerings based on no percentages, servant can serve the amount we give is totally fair and in harmony and with other, our prosperity. Or else he will be I sometimes call this my 10 plus 10. 
I make a commitment in giving a percentage of my income to each one of these areas mentioned. This way I literally support thousands of mission activities. Isn't it amazing to think that wherever the church is experiencing success in the world, my offerings have probably contributed in some way to that success. Join me in participating in the personal giving plan. As it's the absolute forward, best. Please remember that your remember, tithes fund and the offerings, mission to finish um, the work. The church cannot function without your tithes and offerings and your contributions to the church budget and the 2030 offering. Let us ask God to help you kill the false gods that are controlling the various aspects of your life and decide to put self last and God first. The deacons come forward. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be in your presence today. Please open our hearts and minds that we may give um, just exceedingly and abundantly as you've given to us. Jesus, I pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Today, our speaker is Samuel Alguera. He is a student at GMA, and he is in the 11th grade. He is the student association pastor at our school. He was born and raised in Miami, and he is part Nicaraguan and part Venezuelan. He enjoys playing the piano, increasing knowledge, and growing his relationship with God. The next voice you will hear after the meditation song is Samuel Alguera.
Sabbath, everybody. Um, well, as you probably heard, my name is Samuel Alguera. I'm Venezuelan, Nicaraguense, and my grandmother's Colombian. So you know, every single <laughs> so you know, every single day I eat amazing food, for sure. <laughs> every single morning I have like the most finest, exquisite meals. So um, for today, I'm going to be talking about unconditional love. So for my first question. I'm going to pose a question. Uh, okay. Um, so I'm going to ask a question. What is love? Um, when I think of this question, it kind of reminded me of this song. 
I I forgot who's by who it was, but it was just a song that I heard. Um, but when I think of what is love, uh, my chaplain told me this funny thing. He said, talk about heartbreak. Everyone's gotten their heart broken, at least <laughs> once in your life. And that made me think, love for a lot of people, it's different things. For some people, love is um, something beautiful. Love is heartbreaking. Love is pain. Love is beautiful. Love is sacred. And I kind of like this next verse. Oh, wait, first of all, um, there's three um, key phrases. There's three Greek words for love. The first one is eros, love between sexes, love between a man and a woman. Phileo love, brotherly love, love between your friends, friendship. And then agape, which is unconditional love. So this brings me to my first, to my first verse, book two. And it's in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. And it goes, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled, and where there is knowledge, they will pass away. What I really like about this is in verse 7, how it says, love will always protect, it'll always, say, it'll always trust, it'll always hope, and it'll always persevere. Whenever you're in a relationship, you know, you have that roller coaster of emotions, right? You have those ups and you have your downs. You have those moments in which you're on fire for the other person, and you have those moments in which it's just, what am I doing? What, what's wrong? <laughs> like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I, I'm gonna share a story. So I have this girl I'm talking with, right? And the, at first when I was starting to talk to her, I was like, okay, how should I continue? Um, what should I say? How should I like continue a conversation, you know? I was nervous, scared. It was my first relationship. Honestly, I was surprised. I didn't think I was gonna get that far. And we're currently, dating, we've been dating for a year, actually, which makes me really happy. Um, <laughs> so, and this verse kind of gives me that insight, how love always protects, it always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, because in the end of everything, you always have that other person who's always there by your side. And now this brings me to my first topic, um, and it's, what is Eros love? So, Errol's love is love between a man and between a woman. It's love between husband and wife. It's love that's pure. It's love that's sacred. It's a holy love that God has made since the foundation of the world. And we see, and we see this in Genesis 2. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 and 22 and 24. So now we're going to open the word of the Lord and in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if you all would open your Bibles um, or your phones or whatever, or however, and we'll start reading. Give me an amen when you get it. It's Genesis 2, chapter 2, 18, 22 to 24. All right. So let's start. And the Lord God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. Then the Lord... God made a woman from the ribs he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. Then the man said, This is now bones of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and his mother, and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Since the foundation of the world, love and marriage has been something sacred, it's been something pure. It says here, it's not good for a man to be alone. God didn't intend for us to live a life of loneliness. He wants us to be with somebody. He wants us to be someone that we can cherish with, someone we can love, someone we can wake up next to, someone that we have somebody that can love us. Uh, and that verse kind of made me think more about what is love, what truly makes love be important. And... <clears throat> Another verse that says here, that is why a man leaves his father and his mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. When you are with 
you're with your wife or when you're with your husband, you love that person. You become one with that person and you love that person. And this brings me to my next verse, which is in Hebrews, which is in Hebrews um, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept here, for God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. Marriage should be honored by all. It's something that is sacred, as I've said. It's something that it's pure. It should be something that you keep a good connection with. It's something that you have to share, a relationship, a special bond that you have with that person. And God says that with that marriage, you have to treat the other person with the same respect and the respect and the love that that person deserves. Because God made you to be with that person because you weren't meant to be alone, and God knows that. He was, you were meant to be with that person. You're meant to be with somebody that you would love. And this brings me to my next verse. 1 John 4.19. We love because he first loved us. It's not be, we don't love because we feel like it. It's not something spontaneous or anything. It's a love, it's a special love that God has put into our hearts. We don't love because it's just something, like just some random emotion. No, it's been something that God put into our hearts. That love, that special relationship, it's a growing love that God put into our hearts. And this brings me to the next one. What is phileo love? Phileo love, I feel like it's one, it's an important one, in my opinion. And I like and I liked reading more about it because it truly was something special. It's full of love in its core is brotherly love. It's that special bond you have with your friend. It's a special love you have with that person who you would call a brother. And this reminds me of this quote, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. As iron sharpens other, as iron sharpens iron, as so one man sharpens another. It's important. It's pure, because you see, a friend, a true friend, will motivate you to pass your limits. They'll motivate you to continue to strive. They'll motivate you to continue to do better. And you would want to work to match that person or even be better than your friend. I have this friend who I play video games with uh, sometimes. And every single time I beat him, I'd be like, oh, you're so horrible. You're bad. You can't beat me. Like, um, just quit the game. You're never going to win. But then whenever he beats me, which is often, um, he just starts saying like, oh, what did he say? So that kind of like motivates me to like want to continue to try and, you know, finally just silence him because <laughs> that just makes me, because that just gives me such like satisfactory joy. Um, but that is what phileo love is. It's love between your brother, love between your friend. It's that special connection, that special bond you have with that person. And we come to our first verse. Greater love has no other than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. When you read this verse, you're like, but to lay down your life, what does that mean? What does it mean to lay down one's life for his friend? Well, what it truly means is that you're putting your life down. You're putting your love down, your relationship down. You want to make sure that that other person has safety. You want to protect your friend. You want to make sure your friend is safe. You want to build that strong relationship. You want to make sure that friend you can live, live with. You want to like have a growing relationship with that friend because you treat him like your own brother. You treat him like he's your own flesh and blood because you grew up with that person. You grew up with your friend. And this reminds me, and when I was thinking of this love, it reminded me of a story between Jesus and Lazarus. So now if you all can go to John chapter 11. And to give a little background information, in reading John chapter 11, verse 1 to 3, it says, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. So 
when you see Lord, the love you want, the lo the one you love is sick. It's kind of weird because you know it's God. How can God? How can a God, a king, um, be so worried about? He can just cure him with the um, with one word. But as we see here, there was a special bond between Jesus and Lazarus. There was that phileo love. There was that brotherly bond between those two. And we're going to see here in John chapter 11, verse 11 to 16. And it says, After he said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus fell asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and you're, for your sake I'm glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. That ending made me think, that we may die with him. It's saying that special mourning to his friend, that grief that he had, that he was saying, let's go to Lazarus, that we can mourn the death of our friend, that we can mourn the death of our brother, that we can mourn that special death that we had, that special bond. And it kind of makes you also think when you see your friend, when you see your brother, even when you see your own family member, when they die, it's that pain, that like shared pain that you have with that friend because you can f almost feel the pain that they're going through, knowing that they've lost knowing that pain and knowing the loss that they've had for that person. Um, and this part that says, so then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Jesus said it plainly. He didn't say like rhetorically, he didn't say it metaphorically. He said plainly, God, I mean, he plainly said Lazarus is dead. He mourned that. He was broken, he was heartbroken because he knew that his friend was dead. And he knew that with one word he could have healed him. But the reason why he didn't heal him was because he wanted to show his disciples the true strength that he had. He wanted to show his disciples that grief that he had. And he wanted to show those disciples that he was the king of kings, that he was the Lord God of Israel, that he was the true lion of Judah, that he was the one who will come back. And we see here in John, oh, forgot to put that in English. We see this in John 11, 20 to 22. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. Um, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, um, and then we see in verse 21, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. We see here two different perspectives. We see the perspective of Mary and the perspective of Martha. Now Martha came to Jesus and she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She said that with pain, with the pain in her heart, because her brother, the one that she's known for about her entire life, is laying there dead. And she's crying to Jesus saying, if you've been here, you could have saved your brother. You could have saved your friend. You could have saved the one that you truly loved. You could have saved the friend. You could have saved that friend who you called your brother. And, but Martha, then the lady said, but I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. God will give you whatever you ask. He'll give you that power to be able to live. He'll give you whatever you know you desire. And now we see a different perspective, the perspective of Mary. In John 11, 32 to 35, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Both of them said the same thing. The only difference is that Mary, she didn't say, oh, but I know. No, she plainly was in grief. She knew. And it's ironic because she was the one who anointed Jesus. So she would have been like, oh, I know you can resurrect him, but no. Mary was in grief. Mary was in that deep pain because she knew that she, because she loved her brother just as Martha loved her brother. And now we go to verse 35. The shortest verse in the Bible, but the most powerful one. Jesus wept. The King of Kings, the Alpha and the Omega. He who is the same today, tomorrow, forever. He who raises people from the dead 
he who will come in the second coming, he who has been anointed, he was the true lion of Judah, the one, the only, Jesus Christ, the Lord of, the God of God, the kings of kings, the one who will dethrone all, and the one who is the most powerful one. He is the one who is, and he will be the one who will always be. And he was weeping. He didn't weep because he knew he was going to die. He didn't weep because of anything else. No, he weeped because of the death of his friend. He weeped because he felt the pain. He felt that sharp pain in his chest. He knew that his friend had died. He knew that his brother, who he loved, was laying there in the grave. He knew the pain in his heart. He had that pain. He knew that his brother, Lazarus, who he called his brother, who he called his friend, laid there. And he wept. Jesus wept. So if Jesus, the King of Kings, the God of God, wept for the death of his friend, wept for the death of his brother, he, you know that he truly would weep for every single one of you here. You know he would treat, he know he treats every single person in this room, every brother, every sister, every single member, every single member of this church. He treats every single one of us as his own brother. He treats as his own sister. He treats them, every single one of you, like your own family. Because every single one of you belong to the family of Christ, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we see here in John 11, 38, Jesus once more, deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. He came to the death of his friend. He came to the death of, he came to the tomb of his friend Lazarus. He saw the cave and he saw the huge grave in front, and he saw the huge stone in front of it. What happens next is amazing. John 11, 42 to 44. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that you may believe that you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with stripes of linen and cloths around his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. This kind of brings me back to the verse, first verse that I shared. Um, to the verse, verse that I shared. And it goes, greater love has no other than this, to lay down one's life. For one's friend. It's powerful because you see that Jesus, he sacrificed everything. He did this in front of a huge amount of people, in front of the Pharisees, in front of all those people, because he wanted people to know that he truly loved his brother so much that he would have resurrected him from the dead because he trusted in his father. He trusted in God and he trusted in his friend and he wanted to see his friends. He wanted to see his brother laying there in that grave, resurrect again. That's the power of friendship, and that's the power of a strong bond between your brother. And a love between a friend is a special thing. This reminds me of another story of a friend who I've known since, honestly, I've known him since I was born. I've played with him, I've texted him every day, but then last year he moved away. I still text with him often, but obviously I still miss my friend, because he was my friend. Yeah, he was my best friend. I treated him like my brother. But knowing that, you know, I wouldn't be able to see him every day, you know, I wouldn't be able to play around with him every day, that hurt, my, hurt me, because I knew that he was my, my friend. But still, I know that God is still going to be there. I know that he, my friend would still be there with me. No matter what happens, nothing is stronger between the bond of a friend. Okay, and now we're going to move on to our next topic. What is agape love? Agape love is interesting because it's not like the other two types of love. It's an unconditioned love. It's a love that's pure. It's out of your own free will because it's the love that God shows you. Agape love is a love that it's for you personally. For every single person sitting here in this church, God has a special love for you. God loves you. 
and you, every single person here. He has a plan for you, and he wants you to love him as he loves you. And this brings me to this verse, 1 John 4, 8. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Whoever does not know God. What does it mean by that, though, does not know God? Saying, to love God, you have to know him. You have to build a relationship with him. You can't just say, oh, yeah, I love God, but you don't practice that relationship. You have to increase your relationship with God. You have to continue to strive for that relationship. You have to show God. You have to prove God. You have to show um, how he, how you love him. But the thing with God is, yeah, the thing with God, it's something special. It's something, a special relationship that you have with him. It's a special relationship that God put into your heart. It's not something that's forced. It's not something that's rushed. It's something that God is there waiting for you. He's waiting for you to open that door and to let him in. He's waiting for you he to change your heart. He's waiting for you to be on fire for Christ. He's waiting for you to be on fire for him. And this brings me on to my next verse. And it's found in Romans, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. So um, I'll let all of you find it real quick. And, all right. And it says here, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's not saying that we had to be perfect for him to love us. It's not saying that we had to sacrifice to be with him. No, it's saying while we were still sinners, while we were still unpurified, while we were still dirty, Christ died for us. He paid that condition. He said, no, you don't have to sacrifice. You don't have to do anything because I died for you. I paid that condition. All I want you to do is open your heart. Let me in. Let me be the one to change your heart. Let me be the one to take control. Let me be the one to speak through you. Let me be the one to change you. Let me be the one to work through you. And here we go to our next verse. How many of you know Pathfinders, by any chance? And um, in Pathfinders, um, we have this motto. It says, the love of God constrains us. And while I was preparing my sermon, I remembered that motto. And it brought me back to this verse in Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. And it says, And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Love binds everything together. Love is what unifies. Love is what solidifies. Love is something pure. Love is something unique. Love is something that God has given every single one of you. It's something that he wants to grow with you. And it makes me think, there's nothing that we can do that can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. There's nothing in this world that we can do that would separate us from the love of God. Okay, and now we go to our next verse. It's, all right. Um, this is, oh, I put the wrong verse. Oopsie. Um, but the verse, it was in, um, it says this, this is my commandment, uh, this is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. This verse is special to me because it's saying you don't have to do anything to prove to me that you love me, but to others, I want you to show that special love. I want you to show how I have loved you, and I want you to show that love to other people. And I want you to show the love of God. I want you, in every single thing you do, I want you to show that I'm working through you. And that's why he calls us to love him. That's why he calls us to open the door, and that's why he calls us to let him work through us. And this now brings me to my last verse, my favorite verse, actually. It's, John 3.16. And if you all wouldn't mind repeating the verse with me, it goes, For God so loved the world, gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, 
but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. It doesn't say here that God loved, that God didn't. It doesn't say that he loved certain people, a certain race, a certain ethnicity, a certain people. No, he says he loved the world. He loved every single person here. He loved, he loved the Greeks, the Romans. He loved every single race. He loved every single ethnicity. God is not for a certain group of people. God is for the world. God will be for the world and God will work for the world because God loved the world. He died for us for we to not have to pay any condition. He died for us because he, because God paid that condition. God paid the condition. He paid the price. He died for our sins. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but that shall have eternal life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, God gave us the power. God gave us that power to grow a relationship with him because he died for our sins because God loved us. And I want to finish with a quick prayer. So if you all would stand up, please. All right. Dear God, God, you know what you do. God, you love this world so much that you sent your one and only son to die for us. God, you know that you're the true God, that you're the one and only. You're the king of kings. You're the one who mourns for every single person here. You're the one who loves every single person here. So God, as we continue this beautiful Sabbath, God, please continue to work in every single one of these people's hearts, God, because you have a plan for every single person here. You love every single person here, God, and you know the true care that you put in their hearts, and you know what you're going to do with them, God. Um, thank you for being the one speaking through me. Thank you because it was by your name, by your power, God, that I was able to be here today. Thank you that you are the King of Kings and that you will always show us your love. In your name I pray, amen.
trust in you, God, you have the final say. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we Amen. What a beautiful service. We thank, we're so happy that everyone is here to, uh, was able to join us today. And please come back for, at 4.30 for AY. You, you will maybe seated to be ushered out. Yahweh. 